Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Dawn's Friday 11 o'clock Zoom class. And we are working today in book 134, AFI's 100 Years, 100 Songs. And the song for today is The Gorgeous, The Sound of Music. So we're going to have a real nice time with this. I've got some extras to put in. Um, Lorna asked me a question this morning, and I thought it would be an appropriate question for everybody. And it's an organ question, and it has to do with golden harp. What exactly does the golden harp do? Most of you have it. If you don't have it, email me, and I'll let you know if you do or not where to find it. But this is how it operates. Golden harp can be used with or without rhythms. You can use it absolutely without the rhythm, and if you're using it without the rhythm, the tempo can still be changed. So you can have a golden harp going up and down quickly, which means you have to have a higher number, or it can be going slowly. Now, how do you turn on the golden harp? It has a little section, and it's usually to the right of your category presets. If you're in front of your instrument, check it out. Some of you have a golden harp to the left. I know fanfares, I believe, the golden harp is over to the left, and it'll say golden harp. And you just have to touch it, and it'll give you some different patterns. Different patterns. What do I mean by that? Well, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. The first pattern is up and down, which is a typical harp pattern. And I've right now got it on 55 beats a minute. So if you play a chord, because remember, a golden harp is affected by what chord you play. Because really, what's happening, it's pretty much like what the virtuoso does. It plays an arpeggio of the chord. What's an arpeggio? An arpeggio is a broken chord. So if you're playing... That's the three notes of a C chord and just played up and down. That's basically what the virtuoso does. Because I'm playing a C chord in the left hand. And now you can hear. And it's going 55 beats a minute, even though I don't have on a style. Sometimes you want to play a slow song like Silent Night or some of your other Christmas hymns, and you don't want your golden harp to be racing. Now, there's other songs that you want to have it go a little faster. So just reach up to your tempo. Now it's up to about 130. Can you hear that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so the tempo can be used even if you're not using a rhythm. The tempo works with the golden harp, but you must have on a left-hand chord because that's the only way it knows which notes to play. And that was an up and down pattern. Now, some of you also have a button that says more, and some of you, when, I, when you press the golden harp, it just automatically comes up in the screen. Number two is an up only. What does up only do? Exactly what you think. Number three is a down only. Number four is a virtuoso, which means it's going to do some crazy things. And then it goes back up doing the same thing. Number five is a skip pattern. Number six is a step pattern. And then you have two. One is a guitar pattern. And one is a banjo pattern, which are very similar. Now, what do the guitar and banjo pattern don't really sound that good with a harp? sound. So you also have a genius button by your golden harp. Some of you do, some of you don't. 
Some of you can only use the harp sound, which is absolutely fabulous. But if you use the genius button, you can now change the sound of the golden harp as well as the pattern. So I could actually have it in a skip pattern, and I can have bells on it. Or I can scroll to make it anything else. Carolines, yeah, that's not going to sound too good. Some of them aren't going to sound good, so you have to try things. That's a flute and, on, and I'm sorry, it's a clarinet flute ensemble. So you can change the sound of the golden harp by going into the genius and scrolling. The pattern it follows is what your more button, when it comes up in the screen, or just the number one button will give it the up and down pattern. So the pattern, it depends on what kind of an effect are you looking for. There's a lot of times when I just use the guitar pattern and I go to the genius and I find a nice guitar. Let's go to just a nice acoustic guitar. And if I play a C chord, it sounds like somebody's picking the guitar. And you can make it as fast or as slow as you need be. And sometimes that's all you need to back a song. Sometimes that's just the perfect background for something like Love Me Tender. You might just want to really slow that down and not use any drums. Sometimes that's all you want to start on. Now that also works well with some of your guitarist backgrounds or your pianist backgrounds. And you can throw in that strumming, that picking guitar. So there's all kinds of different things that you can do with golden harp. Okay, so does that answer some questions about golden harp? Things you always wanted to know, right? Yeah, yes and no. Yes and I no? Mean, <laughs> I got the golden harp, and if I put the more and the genius on and all that good stuff, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to change anything. What, what, else am I, what else am I missing? You have to play a chord. Yeah, I play a chord. Uh -huh. So if I've got the genius on, okay. and I've got the down. The genius? You've got to put, you put the easy button, right? You, yes, use the easy button. Or one of the other styles. Correct. You can use any style you want. And then by playing a chord, it activates that golden harp in whatever sound you have used. Now, if you've got a sound on that's so soft that you can't hear it, it might be interfering. You might have a background that's got all this big band disco stuff going on, and the golden harp really doesn't come through very well. So you have yep. to use it judiciously. Okay, I, I've got guitar, acoustic, Okay. Uh, Rezo, whatever that. And okay. it's playing up and down. Okay. Got the genius on and the more on. Okay. And if I play a C chord, all I get is the C. Easy make sure part. you touch. Are you touching? You got to make sure you touch one of them in the window. Yeah, up, well, up and down. Yeah. Okay, That's touch it. up and down. Full box. And nothing. Just, just the C chord. Try a different sound. Go to the genius and scroll to a different sound. Or turn your genius off. And let's just see if it does the harp sound. Okay. I, yeah, it's there. I can hear it. Yep. Okay. You can hear it going up and down? What sound do you have on? What song? What sound? I have uh, up and down, golden harp, uh, and the easy button. Really? Okay. Um, sounds to me like you need to do a, a, a hard reset, just do a genius reset when we're done, and see if that doesn't fix it. Because right. it should be, it should be, if you've got it, if you've got it pressed, if you've got golden harp pressed and you've got genius or not genius, all the genius does is change the sound, and you've got one of them in the window touched, and you touch a chord. It 
it should go. No. Okay. Well, at the end of class, maybe we can talk about a yeah. hard reset. Okay. All right. Hard reset. If anybody forgets, first of all, if something like that glitches and your, your organ is a computer and sometimes it will glitch, um, the, the reset button or the home button, that's not going to fix it. That's just in case you press too many buttons and you go to the reset and it just takes you back to the home page. That's not going to fix it. How do you do a reset? Well, I've already got my stuff programmed in here, but it's, yeah, that's okay. I can redo that. Oh, um, if you go to your feature clear, go to your feature button and touch it, it'll bring up all these little windows. It, for page one says levels, tuning, sustain lengths, AOC. And if yeah. you scroll, you're going to scroll to, and I can't remember what page it's on, I think 10. Yeah, page 10 on your features says reset. It says reverb, microphone, MIDI, reset. Some of you have it on different pages, but it is there. Okay. And you touch reset. Then it's going to say reset presets and total reset. If you touch total reset, don't touch anything else. Just touch total reset. It, it'll recycle your computers and totally reset your organ. That should fix it. If it doesn't, then, we'll, then we can do the five finger reset. But that usually fixes everything. Okay? All right, let's talk about the sound of music today. And David, if you don't get that fixed, call me after class and we'll figure something out. We'll figure it out. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Okay, the sound of music. All right, what did I do with my little sheet? Here it is. We all know that this came from the 1959 musical, The Sound of Music. It is the title song. And in 1959, Rodgers and Hammerstein asked singer Patti Page to actually record this song ahead of the opening of the Broadway production because they were looking for some national attention for their, for their new musical. Um, the songs debuted at number 99 on the Billboard Hot 100, so it actually made the Hot 100 the day the musical opened is when Patti Page's debut on this at, at number 99 on the Billboard Hot 100. Then the original production on Broadway was Mary Martin, and in 1965, the one that most of us are familiar with is Julie Andrews, and she did the film version the song is also number 10 in the AFI's 100 Years, 100 Songs. So in, in your book here, this is, this is slated as song number 10 out of 100. Now, some of you maybe remember back in 2013, Carrie Underwood of American Idol fame, she did a live television broadcast of The Sound of Music. And for somebody who had pretty much just, just, one American Idol and was just getting used to uh, being in, the, in front of the cameras. I thought she did an incredible job and she had 18 million viewers when she played Maria Von Trapp in The Sound of Music in 2013 on TV. Did any of you remember watching that? Yes, People, I did. Yeah. yeah. Did you see her singing on the, Graham, uh, the country award show? She was uh, fabulous. Oh. She, she just gets better and better, doesn't oh. she? Yep. <laughs> yeah, really, really good. Yeah, always have liked her. She's a wonderful, wonderful singer. All right, so the sound of music, um, the song setup comes up to Candelabra at 92 beats a minute, Candelabra. I also like it on one of my go-to backgrounds, which is Strings 101 at the same tempo, 92. If you have a smaller instrument, um, a Freedom 3 mellow 8 beat works very well. Standard swing time, you can also manipulate that and add some orchestral strings to it to make it give it a bigger sound. If you've got an easy 10, easy 4, easy 2, easy 1, um, you do actually have a mix candelabra. Maybe, the, maybe only the easy 10 has this. Mix Mix Pianist comes up to Candelabra, which is the song set up in the larger instruments, and Rhythm Preset number three or number five. Both of those sound absolutely fabulous. Or you can even go to your Ballad 
full band, which is Wonderful World. Wonderful World. Okay, don't forget to mute yourselves while I'm speaking. Somebody's got some extraneous sounds going on there. So just click on your little microphone. <coughs> turn yourselves off. <clears throat> okay. I know sometimes that's hard to do. So I'm going to play this on Candelabra as it comes up for song setup. And I've added some extra notes. So I want you to just listen for those extra notes. And think if you think maybe adding a golden harp to this would sound good. Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. Dennis all. <laughs> he was the creator of that background. <laughs> yeah, that is always one of the showiest backgrounds you can use in, for the intros and endings. It's that candelabra. It's absolutely spectacular. Okay, you heard some of the extra notes? Yeah, I, I messed up a couple of them. Um, that's because I can't read my own writing, but that's okay. I'll tell you what extra notes I did put in, and it will make it sound very beautiful. Um, Let's do some extra chords first. I didn't change much. As a matter of fact, on page one, no changes. Woohoo! <laughs> page two, second line, second measure, play the C, cross out the F, and throw it away. You're just going to play the C for the whole measure. Wow. Not too often that I eliminate chords. Line three, last measure, the D minor over the word lark. You may add a seven. And line four, the very first C, you may add a seven. 
C and B flat. And the last line, measure two, you may put a seven on the G minor, making it an F, G, B flat. Or just play G and B flat. Cross out the A minor and substitute a plain old C. And then the next measure is a C7. And that's it. So as far as chord changes, there's really not much to doctor up here. The, the basic chords are wonderful. Okay, what did I do for fingering? Let's go to the fingering. C4, D5, C4, B flat 3, A2, G1, F3 with a circle, you're crossing it over, E2, D1, E2, E2, Second line, F3, G4, I'll put in the extra notes later, F3, E2, D1, E2, F3, G4, A1, circle it, you're doing a thumb tuck, B flat, 2. Third line, first measure, your pickup note is a 4, second measure, the low E is a 2, F3, G1 with a circle, A2, B flat 3, C4, D5, low E1, F2. Fourth line, F2, and after that held F, put a check mark. You are going to switch fingers. Over the word my, the F is a 4, F4, four, E3, E flat 2, D1, 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 E2, 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 F3, F3, A5, F3, E2, top of the next page, D1. E2, E2, F3, E2, D1, 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 E2, 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 F3, F3, C5, A3, F1, second line, G2, 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 check mark. F3, D1, 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 E2, 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 F3, F3, A5, F3, E2, D1, E2, E2, F3, F3, A5, F3, A5. E2, 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 F3, G1 with a circle, A2, B3, C4, D5, fourth line, first measure, C4, C4. The coda, B3, C4, A2, B flat 3, C4, A2, B flat 3, C4, C4, last line, C4, F1, F1, B flat 4, E2, E2, and F1 with a circle. Okay, let's do the road map next before I start adding all the extras. The road map is a little bit tricky. Did anybody have problems following me when I played it the first time? The good news is you all know the song. So if you know the song, use the lyrics to lead you where you're going. The problem is it's kind of written, kind of goofy. And the reason is to save ink and paper so they could get it on two pages. So what we're, what we're going to do is just use your lyrics, 
to follow it through. The hills are alive with the sound of music. Then you have on line two a one comma three with a bracket. That means it is not only the first ending, it is also the third ending. So the first time with songs they have sung for a thousand years, and then you do the first measure on the third line, and then you bracket closes, and you have two dots, a thin line, and a thick line. If you want to take your highlighter, go ahead and highlight that because that's sending you backwards, that's a repeat dot, to the dots that are facing the opposite direction, which is on line one. So you want to highlight those the same color. So if you have yellow, you're going to go back to yellow. Now we do the second verse. The hills fill my heart with the sound of music. You might want to put a little two, a little colorful two at the end of line one and use the same color to trace the two in line three where that bracket goes up. So that the second time you know you're going from the end of line one to the second ending in line three. And if you use the same color for that, like put a little blue two and then trace the two here so that you know two goes to two. Same color. Now we do the bridge. All of the second, all of line one on page two, line two, line three, and the first measure of line four, then you have those two thin lines and some instructions. So if you want to make that a different color, you could make that green or pink or whatever you want, but then use the same color to go back to the silly sign because it says DS Alcoda. Return to the silly sign, and then we're going to look for the two coda. So you would make this a color. If you make it pink, the silly sign is again at the top of the first page. Make that pink so that you know pink goes back to pink. Now we're looking for the two coda. Remember, you never go backwards to a coda. Codas only send you forward. Coda in Italian means tail, which is the end. So codas are the final ending. Well, we've played ending one, we've played ending two, now we're looking for ending three, and then we're looking for the coda. Oh my, this is why this one's a little bit tricky. But follow the lyrics. I go to the hills when my heart is lonely. Third ending, same as the first ending. I know I will hear what I've heard before, and at the end it, of that line it says, to coda. So you want to make that a whole different color. Make it chartreuse or whatever color you're using. And then you want to make the coda, which is down here at the end of the second, the second page, make it the same color. Remember, the two coda sends you forward to the coda, which is the tail end, and finish the song. Okay, did you get that or are you confused? I don't know. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it. Think you got it? Yeah. Okay. Try to follow it the next time I play it because the, the roadmap is pretty important on this. Yep. Let's go to the extra notes. The extra notes are in line two. First page, line two, first measure. Okay, your extra notes are going to be E, it's going to go downhill, you're going to play four notes. E on the top space, D on the fourth line, C on the third space, and you're going to run it, I know you're going to run into that quarter rest, just ignore it, and B on the middle line. And I wrote a little note to myself, I put an LH with an arrow, meaning play it with your left hand. Can you see what I did? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, very good. Then at the end of that line, for a thousand years, you're going to play that B flat, and then you're going to play the notes 
F on the top line, E on the fourth space, D on the fourth line, and then the first beat of the next measure, and I just wrote it off to the side so that I have all four notes in a row, it's going to be C in the third space. But if you write it over here, you might miss it. So write it, just write it in the margin. So you go F, E, D, and then know that C is going to actually be the first beat of the next measure. Now, are you going to play that with your left hand? I wouldn't because you have to change your chord in order for that C note to sound. So, so if what, excuse go me, ahead, go ahead. The, uh, the four first notes. On the, so, the first notes? Yeah. E, D, C, B. E, D, C, B. Elephant, dragonfly, chickens, and butterflies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And when you do it with the left hand, just go thumb, two, three, four. Why am I doing it with the left hand? Because I have plenty of time to reach back down and I just tuck my hand underneath. I got plenty of time to come back down and play that F for my chord. The difference with this last one is that I'm, I have to play a chord and then I have to change the chord. So I really don't have time to play it with my left hand. So you've got the second finger on the B flat. Now you can do one of two things. You can either drop the B flat and just play it with your right hand. Or you can hold the B flat, which is what you should do, and play it with the remaining fingers. Well, guess what? Your remaining fingers are five, four, three, and one. So it gets kind of tricky. And, I, and if you noticed, I made the mistake and missed it the first time. It's a little tricky. So you might just want to drop the B flat and just play 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Otherwise, if you want to hold the B flat, it's 5, 4, 3, 1. And that one's going to get tucked under your, your finger. It's doable. It's a little awkward. If you can think of a better way, go for it. Or like I said, just drop the B flat and play 5, 4, 3, 2, and be done with it. Okay, that, you need to put a little note by it. The FEDC, you only play the first ending. You do not use it for the third ending. So you have to put first time only. First time only. The third time you don't play it, and you go straight to the coda, and it doesn't work if you use it the third time. So you have to do it first time only. Mm -hmm. You have one more of those beautiful little runs, and that is at the end of the song, sing once more. And then you can do that one with your right hand or your left hand, doesn't matter. And the notes are, after you play that F at the end for more, D on the fourth line, C on the third space, B flat on the middle line, and A, and the A is going to be the first beat of that last measure on the second space. So D, C, B flat, A. And you can do left hand five four. You can do left hand one two three four, or you can do the right hand five four three two. Doesn't really matter, whichever ones get there first. But it does add. Don't you think that adds a little bit of professionalism and just makes it sound pretty? I thought it did. Now I also want you to notice my technique in playing. Some of it I played smooth and big and just did some nice full things. Then when I got to the bridge, I went to the lower keyboard. My heart wants to beat like the wings of the birds that rise. I played those notes, not all of them, but the first ones of the measure, I played them staccato. I just popped on them and came right off. So it's like you're dancing. You're dancing on those notes. So over the word beat, you're on the last line of page one, third measure, 
my heart wants to beat. Put a little dot, not next to it, but either above or below it, so you know that that is going to be a staccato. Beat, like the wings, do it over the E for wings, put a dot. Birds, you can do it or not, birds that rise from the lake to the trees, that you can play smoothly, but then when you get to my heart, my heart, put a, put a staccato dot on the D for the word heart, put a staccato dot on the E for the word sigh, and then in the second line, the third measure, to laugh like a brook when it trips and falls. You might want to do it on laugh, Brook, and you might want to do it on trips and falls, too. But just use your judgment on that. But what it does is it just gives you a, 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 an oral visual, um, that's an oxymoron, of, of um, what we're trying to portray with the lyrics. To laugh like a brook when it trips and falls over stones on its way. And then when you get to sing through the night, I put a little U. I went back to the upper one, so I had a bigger, bigger chorus, bigger orchestrals. To sing through the night. And that one you want to just get nice and big, and if you want to use lots of FX in there, because that goes to the peak of the song. And the third time when you sing, I go to the hills, that's when you want to do lots of FX and make it louder. Dynamics. Lean into your foot pedal and make it louder. Just a little bit. It doesn't have to be real abrupt, but you just want to use your dynamics to create the expression of the song. Any questions so far? No? Yes? How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing good. Okay, I'm going to play it this time on Strings 101, Rhythm Preset 0, which gives me those nice acoustic sounds, uh, or acoustic, orchestral sounds on the top. I think I need more coffee. <laughs> and a violin, a solo violin on the bottom. So we'll put on a nice introduction and play the sound of music. Follow the road map. What tempo are you at? I'm at 92. Second ending. Now I'm going to the lower keyboard.
Jesus, we know the song. So it makes following the roadmap a little easier. If you have it color coded, it will absolutely help you, but you need four colors in this case, at least four. Okay, any questions? <laughs> Pretty song, huh? Beautiful. Yeah, this is a nice one. This is, this is a good book. I enjoy this book. All right, next week we will do, let's see what's coming up. Nope, we're going to skip that one. It's eight pages long. So we're going to skip Springtime for Hitler just on the sheer size of it alone. I don't think that many of you know it. And Stormy Weather. Now, we did do Stormy Weather in, I don't know if it was a Tuesday class. Um, so some of you have already had this. But I think it, it, we can repeat it. We can absolutely repeat it. Okay, most, um, some of you only come to this class, so it does bear repeating. And unfortunately, that's just Hal Leonard. Okay, so eh, what am I going to do? The next song, I'm not sure if we'll do it or not. That's a Bruce Springsteen song from the movie Philadelphia that won a Grammy. And the one after that is, um, oh, the theme from MASH. Okay, I'll see how much there is to teach in stormy weather, and I may go ahead and do the suicide is painless, but I have a feeling we're just going to do the one. Questions? No. That's Hello? Hello? <laughs> we got a lot go ahead. Of, a lot of chord changes in stormy weather. Yes, there are. Yes. Any questions about the song we did? It would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, if, you, if you don't feel like doing the extra notes, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And I know we spent some time on, um, on resetting organs, and we spent some time on, on Golden Harp, but every now and then I feel like That's there's, there's uh -huh. stuff that if, it, if it's worth answering the question for one person, that several of you are probably needing to know the answers to as well. Sure did. <laughs> and it's working. Good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can, Dawn, on the sound of music, I have a lot more extra chords and extra notes, so see me at the class. I am sure you do, but you have to remember this class is titled Intermediate Advanced. <laughs> if it was a Monday class, I'd say, give them all to me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but this yeah, class. Be nice, whatever your name is. This, <laughs> that's, that's Joe. You can thank Joe for that. <laughs> Dawn? Yes. Betty Walters. Hi, Betty. How are you? Well, I'm here, but I can't. You can. I can see you, but I don't think you can see me. Did you have to click on your camera? You have a little icon on the bottom, and it, you should be able to click on your camera, and then it will turn that on. Hey, Don. Did you get it? I can't always see everybody. I don't see the camera. Okay, I can't. Yeah, it, Betty, it's I don't. Says start vi vi video, no? Yes. Yeah, yes, start video. Yes. Try it and see what you, because all I have is, is, your, is your name up here. That's all I have. This is the first time I've gone to gallery page while I've been teaching. I love it. Hey, I get to see all you guys. <laughs> Hey, Don, what book are you using again? This book is number 134. It is AFI's 100 Years, 100 Years of 100 Songs. It's a white book with gold lettering. Okay. okay. Will you be using that in your lessons now? Is that the one you usually use? It's the one I use for Friday class for now. For the and, Friday class. Mm-hmm. And when we get okay. to the end, I will go back to the beginning because we started in the middle and we'll go back to the beginning and start until we meet at that middle spot. If you need a book, okay, because yeah. we're about halfway through the book, it's yeah. still worth getting a book for the rest of the songs that we're planning to do. Okay. Um, please 
email me. Now, my email is 5028 at FletcherMusic.com. Or you can go to Hal Leonard and order right from Hal Leonard. Sometimes you can go to Amazon and get the same book. Okay, thank you. But we can always order books for you. That's not a problem. And if you need to have a ship a book to you, we've done that for people already, too. Thank you. You're welcome. Don? Yes? Incidentally, um, the reset finally worked. Uh-huh. And so now it does work. I can do the... Now it does work. Okay. Oh, That's God. what I, I thought it might. Yep. The biggest problem I had when I reset it, I had this big hum. And the hum wouldn't go away. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. What was wrong with my organ? Well, when You're I reset still... it, my pedals went on. <laughs> and my feet are on my pedals. You were stepping on a pedal. <laughs> you do have a button that says pedal pedals off. And you can I do. It. Yeah. And when I took that off, the hum went away. Very nice. Very nice. See, we all forget about these things. So sometimes uh, sometimes talking about, you know, issues that we have with our instruments. If somebody has an issue, chances are you might have had that same issue at one point in time and you need to know about resets or or you need to know about golden harp. So I try to do more than just the songs. Don't be afraid to ask me questions. If you have any questions, email me, call me. Um, Come into the store and see me, uh, and we'll get everything fixed for you. So thank you so much. It's been a fabulous class. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. Thank Bye, you, Dawn. Dawn. Bye everybody. Bye. See you oh. this afternoon. Okay, we'll see you this Bye. afternoon. Bye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome.